how do you get started on the carnivore diet? And first we have to kind of talk about how the carnivore diet started and who the, almost the founding fathers were. Now, a lot of the time these people are referred to that have been following this diet for 10, 11, 15 years, that have been successful doing it their way. That's kind of like who these people praise and base their principles off of. But the original person, Owsley Stanley, who followed the diet for over 50 years, uh, he was a famous audio guy for a band back in the day. He was known for producing LSD, I think, big into that drug scene, and he followed this diet for 50 years. He had a forum where he answered all these questions and his philosophies on the diet, and I'll post that in the description after the video, but Charles Washington interpreted his stuff on that forum into bullet points that I'm going to go over today. Now, keep in mind, Owsley Stanley had a heart attack when he was older and required open heart surgery. So maybe he might not be the perfect example of health and we should always take things with a grain of salt and not at face value. But let, let's just move into the points and I'll speak on their points, kind of theorize why it might be a good idea to do it. So the first point is eat only from the animal kingdom. You know, dairy and eggs can be problematic for some people uh, depending on allergies. Um, and oysters, shellfish, fish, a lot of those foods are things we don't see people eating on the carnivore diet, unfortunately. It tends to be a beef-only diet, but eating only from the animal kingdom is a very broad description. It doesn't consider those allergies. It doesn't consider high omega-6 in certain foods. It doesn't consider nutrient profiles. It doesn't really talk about um, various things that do come up with almost everyone. And on the topic of dairy, they say only eat low-carb dairy. Don't eat milk, don't eat yogurt, certain things, but they don't mention that raw grass-fed butter is one of the healthiest foods you could eat. And the vitamin content of raw grass-fed dairy is more substantially important than whether or not you're having some carbohydrates from milk. So uh, outside of the dairy intolerance thing, to me, how can you bring up dairy and talk about it without bringing up the importance of the quality and the nutrient density? To me, that doesn't make sense. And it already wants me to kind of throw out the rest of this list. But let's move on anyway. Eat no plants. Certain spices and herbs are deemed okay, but might be removed initially. Uh, that's just in, to process and see what irritates you. And obviously, there's a big difference between putting black pepper on your steak and aged balsamic vinegar, and not even that, but like black pepper versus barbecue sauce. There's dozens of ingredients in the barbecue sauce, sugar and things. And even with cheese, there's a difference between cheese made with animal rennet and dairy and cultures versus the Kraft Singles that has milk skin powder and various other things. You have to understand what, especially like things like McDonald's cheese. There's people, every individual food needs to be talked about and justified. And even in the context of eggs, you might have a problem with supermarket eggs, but local pastured eggs might be fine. Same with the dairy. You might be fine with raw dairy, but not cooked dairy. Then they say, don't eat liver or brains because they're full of carbs. This ties into the nutrient density thing. and. First of all, there are no real carb significant carbohydrate content in these foods. When the animal dies, the glycolytic enzymes in the meat turn the glycogen into lactic acid, lower the pH of the meat, but you don't hear them saying that, right? They just say, oh, don't eat brain tissue because there might be carbs in it. Like, to me, there's like, it's almost like a cult-like conventional wisdom mindset of things that they, these people don't explain or look into. And not only are liver or brains not full of carbohydrates, but they're literally the highest vitamin foods. Brain is one of the best sources of omega-3s, DHA, and liver has every fat-soluble vitamin. The only thing that might counter liver is kidneys, and liver has more vitamin A, kidneys have more selenium, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But that just doesn't have merit to it. It just makes, like half of this list to me just doesn't make sense. Have plenty of fat and eat mostly fat until you feel like you've had enough. Eat fat and organs if you do first. And this is not something that people really hammer home, but it's very important because your body has a fat signal and once you eat a certain amount of fat, your body says, okay, I've had enough to eat. Then maybe you could have a few bites of muscle meat, some organs here and there, but your body has a set amount of fat it can digest at once because your body stores bile in the gallbladder and your satiation and what you want to eat is determined by you know your cravings, how much bile you have stored, all of those various factors. So it's very important in regards to satiation and making sure you're eating proper fat ratios that you eat the fat first. And once you're familiar with that, then you can say, okay, maybe I could just eyeball ribeyes and dip some ribeyes in butter. There's no nothing wrong with doing that. But a lot of people start this diet and the biggest problem is they're not eating enough fat. And what also ties into that is don't cook meat too much. Whereas this goes against the conventional wisdom 
and what a lot of people on the zero carb carnivore diet want to do is they just want to cook their meat to whatever temperature they want but the original wisdom is cook it blue just sear it on the outside leave it raw in the middle and these people seem to just cherry pick how they want their interpretation of the carnivore diet to be and what this does is it digests easier when it's raw the body's more efficient at digesting raw meat because of various enzymes you know the water isn't cooked out especially fat some people have a very difficult time digesting rendered fat that's the main difference I've noticed so all these principles have various reasons behind them some of them don't but it just seems like people have picked what they want to believe and what they don't and just do their own version of the carnivore diet no supplements drink water and do not salt your food well pretty much everyone on this diet I think uses salt some people don't and this is one of those things where indigenous groups some of them cooked food some of them didn't cook food but almost every indigenous group consumed both cooked and raw food the thing is there aren't really any indigenous groups that salted their food but in like the Eskimos they grew up smoking tobacco and they could not quit their tobacco habit same thing with salt I think if it's ingrained in our culture there's nothing inherently wrong about it because we would obtain it from seafood but again one of the original wisdoms of zero carb is don't salt your food but you never see that mentioned and electrolytes are a whole topic in and itself that I have to revisit again even though I've done videos in the past vitamin concerns and they say oh well this diet has all the adequate vitamins they don't go into detail and then in regards to scurvy they say well you don't won't get scurvy because ascorbic acid is needed for carbohydrate metabolism and you're not consuming carbohydrates but you know to not know that liver has vitamin C and that almost every organ tissue in an animal has some amount of vitamin C vitamin E all the other fat soluble vitamins and foods like liver are nutritionally complete Foods like salmon roe have every vitamin, incredible amounts of DHA. These foods are the reason I started my YouTube channel, to get people to know about them. And to not mention these foods on this diet and use that to justify the reason why people have nutrient concerns is just crazy. And this was not mentioned in the FAQ. They just brushed it off and said, oh, you're fine. You know, you know meat is adequate. Meat is all you need, which to me is just it's silly. Uh, no one is having trouble removing fiber on this diet, and that's more anecdotal. Most people remove fiber from their diet and they actually see improved digestion and fiber is not necessary in the human diet. Like you don't digest fiber so there's no justifying it from that perspective. And to say that fiber lowers cholesterol, that's a whole different discussion in itself. Gout is mainly caused by fructose. So people are concerned about gout and high purine foods but the reason your body produces uric acid is because uh, I believe the ATP metabolism involved with fructose, especially high fructose corn syrup, when it's not in the presence of glucose, produces high levels of uric acid crystals in the blood. So carnivore diet, that's not a concern. And I'll post that study in the description. Do we need glucose? And the body can produce glucose from gluconeogenesis. And just, you know, people have been on this diet for years and years and years. And you don't need to eat glucose. That's, that's one of the silliest things that people say, oh, your body needs sugar when carbohydrate is a non-essential nutrient. That's just crazy to me. Is this diet okay for pregnancy? All indigenous diets and you know women a hundred years ago who were popping out 15 children consumed a base fat soluble vitamin content in their diet. That's what's required for optimal human health and the Weston Price Foundation does a diet for pregnant women that emphasizes getting 70 to 80 percent of your calories from foods like high quality high vitamin animal foods and it's ironic that people are concerned about vitamins on this diet when it's literally the highest vitamin diet because people don't understand that the bioavailability of nutrients from plants in paper value is not necessarily what's absorbed in the body and I'm going to talk about that in, I've talked about that in many videos I'll link to the video in the description but Oregon meats, meat, high quality animal foods, wild caught fish, high quality raw dairy, grass fed dairy, pastured eggs all have every vitamin in the highest bioavailable form available to the body and each of those foods has different nutrient profiles that I go over in my various videos. Food sourcing, how to get actually started. I have a video on food sourcing and the main concern I wanted to address here as getting a good quality source of fat is a problem. Ironically, raw grass fed butter is actually one of the easier things for people to get and it's important because fat is your main source of nutrients, energy, vitamins. You want to get a good source of fat and asking the butcher for trim fat grass-fed trim fat, grass-fed marrow, sometimes these foods can be either hard to get 
expensive or you're like me where you're allergic to dairy and eggs so you can't have them you have to find other things eat me till you're full eat as much as you can don't go okay so a lot of people are saying eat till you're full you know eat if you're not hungry that's not true people in the fat of the land the uh, fat of the land is a book by William R. Stephenson Arctic Explorer who experimented with all meat diets about a hundred years ago and in that book they didn't eat for a couple days on adapting to an all meat diet because they didn't want to. They weren't craving the meat. They didn't eat for a few days and they started nibbling on the meat. Then they started actually eating. Another thing from Fat of the Land that people like to say is they fed the organs to the dogs, but they, that was actually caribou liver. And the reason they fed caribou liver to the dogs was because caribou didn't have a gallbladder and the liver was bitter because of all the bile. In every other context in that book, there's literally dozens of examples of preference for the head, the heads of fish, liver, fatty tissue, you know, literally preference for organ meats. So for people to be contradictory and say that you should salt your food, you shouldn't eat liver, and then to take quotes like that from Fat of the Land but ignore the other things, it's incredibly contradictory. Uh, it's, they're just fitting like Sean Baker is, has been doing that lately. He's being very close-minded and just taking bits and pieces and cherry-picking information to fit his version of the carnivore diet. and you guys can be angry at me for saying that, but I mean, from an objective perspective, to me, that's what it looks like. Um, fat of the land, preference for fatty organs, especially marrow, fatty fish liver. Their favorite foods were literally bone marrow from the lower leg. Uh, some foods they ate preferred cooked, some foods they preferred raw. Like the bone marrow, the soft, creamy from the lower leg, they preferred that raw. Whereas the, the harder bone marrow, more clay-like from the upper leg, they preferred it boiled. You know, the heads they preferred boiled. Um, you know, it depends on the food and the preparation. Various indigenous groups prepare them differently. And indigenous groups were in perfect health on various animal food sources. The Inuits ate fish and caribou. Some Florida coastal Indians only ate shellfish as their source of animal vitamins. There's multiple ways you can do this. Uh, they did not salt their food and they ate both raw and cooked animal tissues. The salt thing is up for debate because we did obtain sodium from either seafood or shellfish or blood. So salting your food is not necessarily bad, but the electrolyte discussion is something I can go into in other videos. Human digestive system is not equipped to extract nutrition from plants as ruminants is. This ties into comparing human digestive tracts to other animals and how we don't ferment. You know, gorillas and cows can ferment a grass a little bit into long chain fatty acids and extract nutrients that we can't do. And their gut size is way longer. There's just very apparent differences between humans with their tool use and, and eating habits compared to animals. What to expect during adaption. So in regards to fatigue, it actually took me about a year to feel good on this diet because I wasn't eating enough fat. It literally took me eight months before I found a good source of fat. And then within a month or two, I started feeling good. So. In regards to reducing fatigue and adjusting, make sure you're eating high quality animal foods, getting a high vitamin content, you're either supplementing vitamin D3 or getting some sun. This is something overlooked because people will go with the conventional wisdom of the zero carb carnivore diet and like go against what their doctor says, but they'll say, oh, my vitamin D3 levels are fine. The doctor says they're fine. Like, why not apply this to all aspects of your health? And Vitamin D3 is scaled from 20 to 100 nanograms per liter, which 20 is literally like you've never been in the sun all year, and 100 is vitamin D3 overdose. So most indigenous groups were between 45 and 65. So you definitely want to optimize your vitamin D3 intake and take that into consideration if you're going to do this diet. It'd be, you know, people following this diet and not looking at other aspects of health, nutrient density, vitamin D3, sleep, our exercise are kind of contradicting themselves. Uh, so to speak, because you're trying to optimize your diet by removing inflammation, but you don't want to increase nutrient density and you don't want to do those other things, it doesn't make sense. Bowel movements. Uh, bowel movements should regulate within a few days. Uh, if problems occur, then you have to try to figure out, you know, is the food source a problem? Should I cook it a different way? Do I have an allergy to the food? Those are all things you should troubleshoot. So if you're on this diet for four, five, six days and you're still getting diarrhea, Definitely try cooking the food less. Maybe switch to beef if you're consuming high omega-6 foods like pork and chicken. Maybe the food source you have isn't good. Maybe you're allergic to eggs or dairy. There's multiple things that could be factors in your digestion and those things are addressed on an individual basis. And that actually seems to be 
you know, when I consult with people and talk about their diet, almost 99% of people have a problem that has to be addressed individually on that basis. And it could, there could also be underlying factors like maybe you're not drinking mineral water, like someone was drinking only carbonated water and someone was drinking only tap water. And there's various aspects in regards to health that can affect this diet in the long run. That's why we're talking about these topics. Uh, so cravings, all cravings should be gone in two weeks. And for if you're one of those people that have like coffee every morning and then are asking why you still have cravings after two weeks, you technically didn't eliminate all the foods on this diet. The reason people don't see success on diets in general is because they can't fully commit to the idea of the diet. And once you're able to do that, then you're able to optimize the diet instead of just going back and forth between what you want to eat and losing discipline and things like that. You know, ideally you remove every food from your diet. So I guess let's talk about like step by step, how do you do the carnivore diet? Well, you know, look into grass versus grain fed nutrient density, determine what you want to do and you know, once you source your food, then you have to say, do I want to eliminate coffee? Maybe I just want to buy higher quality coffee. Maybe I want to buy higher quality chocolate. You know, how strict do you want to go on this diet? And the best way to do it is eliminate everything for a couple weeks. Only like high quality beef fat, water, and beef, maybe some liver here and there, maybe some cod liver oil for vitamins for a couple weeks. See how that goes. If you have no problems, then, I mean, if you can eliminate salt, try it. If not, don't. You could try adding foods in at that point. And at that point, since you've eliminated literally every possible inflammatory food, you don't have to worry, is it because I'm drinking coffee? Is it because I'm having dark chocolate after every meal? Is it because I'm having barbecue sauce? Is it because I'm putting, you know, uh, black pepper, a ton of black pepper on my steak? You want to remove those factors and try not to worry about those things. So I think this video is long enough. I think I've covered pretty much any question you would have in regards to what to do on the carnivore diet. Um, you know, and I have day of eating videos, you can watch other days of eating, you can see what people do, but, you know, I just wanted to bring this up because you have people like Sean Baker promoting his version of the carnivore diet, which is not, does not go in line with what all these people conventionally say. You have people doing various versions of the diet, you have the raw primal people who follow a Jonas Vonder Planets. There are many interpretations of this diet, and overall, me... I look more into what indigenous groups did, how to achieve maximum nutrient density, reduce inflammation while still enjoying your life and doing what, you know, I, you know, I have no problem with eating certain amounts of plant foods. And there are definitely various interpretations of this diet and it's unfortunate that people kind of fall down a rabbit hole of just how the way one person does things, uh, especially considering, you know, Sean Baker's a very high level athlete. He's only been on the diet for a year. He hasn't done this, you know, and then you have all these other people who have been on the diet for 10, 15, 20 years, and I couldn't even have a conversation with them about the taste difference between baby lamb's liver and cow's liver or veal's liver because they haven't tried it. So just because someone does something, you have to keep in mind closed-mindedness, subjectivity, and objective thinking. If someone does something and it works and it makes them feel better and they just stick with it and they don't question oh, should I incorporate raw butter? Should I supplement vitamin D3? If you don't constantly question and try to learn, I think you're not doing anything right. And the problem with a lot of the current people having problems with zero carb from not being able to lose weight and not feeling optimal and not being in perfect, perfect physical health is one of these factors that I've talked about today. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you guys would like to uh, reach out to me for consultations, you guys could say, oh, what does this guy have? You know, he's not a doctor, he's got nothing. I like to think I've been on this diet, you know, I've been on this diet for six years. I have, I'm educated in various aspects of this diet, especially in comparison to other people that are offering consultations for much higher rates and not offering the information and the, you know, the lack of, like, like troubleshooting and things that I'm able to do. So, if you guys are concerned about that, if you'd like an introduction to the diet, if you're having problems being in the diet, reach out to me for that. Otherwise, if it's a short question and it only takes a minute or two to answer, just leave a comment on the YouTube video, guys. And above all, just share the channel. Uh, I'm trying to post more on Twitter lately, uh, especially considering Joe Rogan followed me. I think it's important that I post on Twitter. We're going to do a live stream tomorrow. I'll try the 6 a.m. thing again, and I'll do the 11 a.m. Uh, not 11 a.m., but the second stream is going to be either at 11 or 2, depending on if I need to get some sun. Uh, but the first stream will be at 6 a.m. again, and I will not take a nap this time, guys. <laughs> I promise I won't be late for the second stream. Um, but 
that's it. I'm excited that you know we're gonna do maybe you know the next 50, 100 videos I do over the next few months. There's gonna be a lot of really good information that I think is gonna help a lot of people.